The best Mini Cooper upgrades for someone on a budget. When you're upgrading your Mini, but you have to do it on a budget, the first thing I tell anybody to do is the tires. Now, you don't have to do them the day that it rolls into your possession. You know, it, the stock tires will do all right, and it is kind of sad to just throw them away. But the first time you need tires, go out to TireRack.com, take a look at a set of Continental tires that I've linked to in the description. Pick a set of rims that will handle them that look nice and won't break the budget because the stock tires and rims from Mini Cooper tend to be highly overpriced. I ended up swapping my tires and rims because a single rim from John Cooper Works was more than a set of four new tires and rims for that I picked out and it was literally that bad. I had damaged one rim. I was it's like oh, $500, $600 for the rim, another $140 for the tire and I went out and picked out a set of tires and rims. The rims were I think $129 a piece. So I got four rims for the price of one which is much nicer since I've gone through three rims so far because of my driving habits. But in any event, do the tires, do the rims. Separate from that, if you're looking for performance on the cheap, and I'm going to say $1,500, um, start with doing a K&N filter. Now, I've done a video installing the Spectre, and the Spectre worked pretty well. I was pretty impressed. For $40, the Spectre was pretty awesome. However, this particular filter from K&N flows much better than the Spectre did. I was surprised. Now, part of that is that the Spectre one was a conical, was a tapered cone? Yeah, a conical, and this is a cylindrical. Um, and so there is more paper in this one, or cloth, since these are cloth filters. But the K&N gave me quite a bit more oomph and a much nicer sound. Um, because there was a little more cloth, I was getting a little more whoosh, but at a slightly lower volume anyway. Um, the K&N works great. It's rated for 881 CFM, so it should flow pretty well. Um, and this was $69. And the nice thing about this one is that it is the exact size that all you have to do in order to mount it is take the top off of your existing stock air intake and get a 90 degree angle bend and stick this in there and it will just sit in there nice it won't rattle and you'll get a fair amount of air especially if you have removed the plug from the scoop on your Mini Cooper which would be the second upgrade that I'd say to do is a deletion of the stopper that is in your scoop. Now that's supposed to be for aerodynamics, it doesn't let any air in, but the truth is that at most speeds your Mini Cooper is going to be more responsive with the cold air coming in through that not quite a scoop but a gap um, and hitting the top of your air filter if you have swapped to an open air cloth air filter. The next upgrade that I would do is also a deletion. I've done the video on how to remove the muffler delete pipe for the turbo, or how, yeah, how to delete this muffler resonator for the hot side of the turbo. Now, I used a $129 part from Alta, but this is just a tube, and so all you really need is a metal tube, or even a silicone tube, that is the same diameter on both ends, as the delete pipe and so you can easily go to Amazon and pick up a set of silicone and clamp it on there or you can find a set of aluminum pipe that is the same size as this and I'll try and find a link to that and put it in the description but it may take me a little while to find the exact one and clamp it in and you are good to go you have no delete pipe and that's a pretty easy upgrade and won't cost you but 10 bucks the next upgrade that I would do is the intercooler. Now, 
Alta makes an intercooler, it's $900. Forge makes an intercooler, it's $650. But the intercooler that I've actually been the most happy with, I will put a link in the description, is from AliExpress.com. Now, in China, a lot of the parts are made, and a lot of the parts are sold by the company that made the parts for the companies here in the U.S. And so AliExpress has the vendor that is basically selling the Forge um, intercooler, but the, instead of being the Forge brand, it's just a generic brand. Um, when it comes, it doesn't come with all of the hose clamps that the Forge model that we tested has, but it's $136 plus $70 shipping. And the shipping is cheaper if you buy more than one. So if you and a couple of your friends wanna buy Mini Cooper intercoolers, pull together and go buy the AliExpress ones because you'll save on both the shipping and you'll save on the price. You won't save on the price unless you buy more than 10. So unless you've got a really big like mini motoring club, uh, that probably isn't an option. But the shipping is quite a bit cheaper if you order three because they put them in the same box and it ends up being instead of $70 shipping from China, uh, closer to $40 a piece from China. So you'll save 120 bucks if you buy three of them. But the AliExpress one, AliExpress used to be Alibaba, takes a little longer to get here, comes from China on a slow boat, but in about 10 days, you will have an intercooler and it costs $400 less than the Forge that it is identical to, minus the hose clamps that you can buy for $3 at any AutoZone. And so those would be the first set of upgrades. The air filter, the, the mini turbo delete pipe, and the intercooler are going to get you a quite a bit more oomph out of your car without changing anything else. No ECU, no nothing. And you're going to get better fuel economy, which was the reason that I did those upgrades first. But if you really then want to make your car go fast, you're going to need to tune the ECU. And in order to do that, you're going to need an Alta access port. You can get a Unichip, and the Unichip will make your car run richer because it basically just lies about the sensor but the Alta will actually let you tune how the car is set up and there are stock tunes for quite a few different things and the stage one will give you quite a bit more horsepower so it's nine hundred dollars so you've got six hundred dollars in parts to get you to basically a stage one setup and then you're going to drop nine hundred dollars from Alta in order to actually be able to do that ECU tune and the nine hundred dollars is probably worth it. I've had very bad service from Alta. I would recommend that you buy it through one of the resellers. Um, Vivid Racing has treated us very well, so um, maybe check out vividracing.com. Um, I believe it's uh, fastboltons.com has done pretty well. There's a number of people that sell the Alta access port. Buy it through them. Don't go direct from Alta. You'll save at least $100. If you look around, you can find the Alta access port 2.0 for the Mini Cooper 2007 Plus for as little as $810. That was the best price that we were able to find on it. And it plugs in and it does ODB2 port stuff. So it's very easy to do. It monitors a whole bunch of functions well worth the $800, but that's the upgrades that I would do for $1,500. If you're going for the full 2000, check into probably, I like the Borla exhaust system the best. I like the sound of it. It's not obnoxious. It has good flow. Um, and so that would be a good upgrade. Unfortunately, that is probably not an upgrade that you're going to do yourself, unlike the rest of them. Swapping in that K and N filter took me 15 minutes. Um, putting in the intercooler was about a 45 minute job and most of that was taking the bumper off and once you figured out how to take the bumper off of the first mini the next ones go faster and yes I will do a video about that but the the upgrades are all ones that you can do yourself. the the exhaust is not one that you can easily do by yourself so you're at least going, I mean, you could if you had the lifts, but doing it in your garage is going to be a bit of a challenge. So that would be the next one that I would do. That's an additional five to $600, depending on which one you choose. And you're at $2,100-ish all in to have almost every upgrade that would make sense for the Mini Cooper. Um, you could throw another 
$50 at Silver Spark Plugs. Those do seem to be um, helpful. They reduce the temperature of your engine slightly. Um, and I didn't think that would matter, but it did make a little bit of difference. Um, doing the turbocharger upgrade, we're trying to pick which one is the best, but that's at least a $1,700 to $2,200 upgrade. And so, you know, another $4,000 isn't bad, but it's a little hard, you know, that's not easy to do. And in order to really boost your turbo pressure, you're going to have to redo your piston heads to a lower compression piston head because the goal is to maintain the 11 to 1 compression ratio that the Mini Cooper runs at that higher boost pressure in order to maintain efficiency. And in order to do that, you're probably going to want to step down to an 8 to 1 or um, a 9 to 1 piston head. And the piston heads will be $1,000 and they're inside the car, so there's a lot of labor associated with that. So that's easily a four dollars to $5,000 upgrade. Um, but that's what you need if you're really going to push a Mini Cooper up to, say, 400 horsepower. Um, as tuned with the the intercooler, the, inter the turbo exhaust, delete pipe, the k and filter charger, and the Borla exhaust that is on this, I'm running 285 horsepower. Um, and I was really hoping to get to 300. It's possible that with the Alta Access port tunes, um, I will be able to get there. Um, if I can pick the right map or, you know, go to one of the power tuners that actually puts it on the dyno and does a whole bunch of tuning. Uh, but there's only six of those and there wasn't one near Phoenix. So that's where I'm at. Um, but everyone I've talked to that has done that tells me that we could push this to 320 horsepower at the wheels, um, 385 under the hood. Um, and that would be pretty awesome because then you have a Mini Cooper that is running horsepower very near what the high-end Mustangs are running um, and with a with less turbo lag than the Lancers have and I should be running neck and neck with almost anything and with the extra rubber on my tires uh, my tires are an inch and a half wider than the stock tires so I have quite a bit more grip which is necessary because otherwise you just can't put that kind of power down you'll be spinning your tires at every gear. So, um, I think that's it. Oh, and upgrade the stereo. Uh, I did a video on doing the upgrade to the stereo and that was definitely well worth it. I've been running it for quite a while here. Um, and spend the couple of bucks to get the upgraded um, tensioner for the timing chain because those things break a lot on the Mini Cooper and I just had to have my timing chain replaced which was sixteen hundred dollars and it hadn't broken yet but they wouldn't have fixed it under warranty because I'm past the warranty time period and it was making a lot of noise it sounded like a diesel and do that before you you know if you do it early it's hundred and forty dollars ish to have the upgrade done at the dealer and it will save you that fifteen hundred dollars which will let you buy fifteen hundred dollars of the parts later when your friend's fixing his timing chain there you go, upgrading your Mini Cooper on a budget.